Some time ago, I was in Detroit for a Shabbaton for Partners in Torah. And I was having lunch, and at my table was sitting somebody who's a friend and a great philanthropist and a special Jew. His name is Gary Turgo. And we were schmoozing over lunch. And he shares with me the following experience. Gary, who's a Yida ben Teira, a Baal Chesed, a special man, is the chairman of Chemical Bank in Midland, Michigan. And he's sitting in his office on the 11th floor of the bank. And a call comes in to the chairman, Mr. Turgo. On the other line, on the other side, of the, on the, he picks up the phone, and a, Jew, a man is speaking to him. He says, is your name Gary Turgo? Are you the chairman of the bank? He says, yes. He says, well, let me introduce myself. I am a Jew. I live in Dublin, Ohio. And I tell you that I am embarrassed with you as a Jew. The Jewish people are embarrassed to have you as one of our people. And I know previously you were chairman of the previous bank, its predecessor, Talmar, which you named after your grandfather. Your grandfather is turning over in the grave from shame that you are his grandson. <laughs> Gary tells me I didn't expect such a shalom aleichem and a baruch haba and such, such beautiful compliments on a nice morning in Michigan. I say, before you go on, could you tell me what happened, what the problem is? Maybe I can help. He says, help? Help? Disgusting, despicable, and it's your bank. He says, please relax and tell me what happened. Maybe I can help. So I'll tell you what happened. I'm 91 years old. My wife died not long ago. We have no children. There's nothing left after us. But 40 years ago, we built a home together. I needed $40,000 loan to build our home in Dublin, Ohio. And I took out a loan, I took out a mortgage for our home. Today the home is worth close to a million dollars. I never defaulted paying a mortgage for even one month. For 40 years, every month I sent in my check, loyally and faithfully. Eight, nine months ago, my wife died. And I got disoriented. I lost my balance, my, my rationality a little bit. And for a few months, I was just not taking care of basic needs. I didn't have the capability and the mental space to take care of my mail. But a few weeks ago, I opened my mail from all these months. And I saw that for the last few months, I wasn't making my payments for the mortgage. And I owed seven payments for seven months. So what did I do? I took a checkbook and I wrote out the full payment for all the seven months. I explained what happened. I was disoriented. I'm sorry for delaying the payment. Here is my payment. I get a letter back from your bank. We're sorry. The home is up for foreclosure. I write back, I don't understand. I paid up these seven months, too late. It's up for foreclosure. Because this is your bank. This is what you do to a 91-year-old Jewish widower who has nothing but his home. Gary says, please give me your address, your name, your number. Let me see what I can do. He hangs up, he goes down to the fourth floor where they deal with foreclosure. He asks the person there to put in the name. person puts in the name. It comes up, and he says, yeah, it's up for foreclosure. Gary says, listen, could you tell me how much he owes on this entire home? With all the penalties, with all the fines, how much is owed on this home? person looks up and says, $5,200. <laughs> he says, okay, just do me a favor. Forget this foreclosure. Leave it alone, cancel it out, it's done. He says, we can't. The mortgage was bought by a servicer. It's out of our hands. It's not ours, there's nothing we can do. Gary says, here, here's a check. 
$5,200, he writes out a check. Overnight it to the servicer who bought this mortgage. I'm taking it. You make sure it goes back. A message goes back to this Jew. This 91-year-old Jew in Dublin. And send him the news and all is taken care of. And Gary wrote a note. Your home was paid off for completely. Forget this seven months. Take back your check. It's fine. We're not depositing that. Fines, penalties, all covered. You owe not a penny on this home. May you enjoy this home for many long, happy, prosperous, and healthy years. Gary Turgo. And it's overnight to the servicer. All is settled. Gary says, make sure you confirm with me when it's done. Make sure the Jew gets my note and the message that the home is his. Great. Done. Life moves on. He tells me around a year later, he gets a call one day. A man introduces himself as a lawyer who practices in Dublin, Ohio. Is your name Mr. Turgo? Yes. Do you remember a Jew in Dublin by this and this name? He says, you have to remind me. He says, this is a man who almost lost his home, 5,200 bucks. He says, yeah, yeah, of course. Was it settled? Did the man get the note that everything was taken care of? He says, yes. And I'm here to tell you that this person died yesterday. And he has no family. He has no children. He says, I'm so sorry to hear. Is there anything I can do? Is everything fine? He says, yeah, there's not much you can do. But uh, I want to tell you a few... Uh, I want to tell you a few days after he got that note, he called me. And he said, we have to change the will. And he changed his will. His final will and testament, he changed. And what he put in is that this home should go to Gary Turgo to distribute to any charity of his liking. So now you have a home and uh, tell me what you want. It's your house. How much is the house worth on the market? $850,000. Gary tells me, he says, Rabbi Jacobs is not bad. $5,200. I got an $850,000 home. Not such a bad investment deal. And the lawyer says, what do you want me to do? So Gary says, put it up. Let's get the money. And I'll distribute it to charity. The man says, great. But Gary says, I need to ask you one thing. What was his passion? If he would give it to charity, what was his passion? And he says, the charities he used to give went to Israel. So Gary said, okay. Take the $850,000, he split it up between 10 moizdas, holy moizdas in Israel, of Torah and tzedakah, including yeshivas and kailalim. And, as he told me before Pesach, they each got their check and the $850,000 were distributed. Before he gets off the phone, the lawyer says, Mr. Turgo, can I share a personal feeling? Sure. He says, I'm a Catholic man a faithful Catholic man all my life. I read the Bible attentively and I know it well. I never understood why did God make the Jews his chosen people? Why them? What did they do? Why them? As far as the Bible is concerned, they don't stop sinning. They're revolting. They're always complaining. They're chronic complainers. They appreciate nothing. And I didn't know why did God make Jews the chosen people? He says, now I know. When I saw your behavior towards this man, now I know why you were the chosen people. That, my friends, I think represents a little bit of our calling at such a moment in history when the Jewish people have a tremendous power wherever they live to influence, not only within our own circle, but literally the world.